In the beginning, when I was first growing the business and first getting it off the ground, I was definitely um, work-life balance was less of a reality because I just had to work constantly in order to keep the lights on. But now at a different stage, for me, it's really about shutting things off and it's about recognizing that even though the world says that you should be on social media all the time, that you should be on all of these different channels, that more is better, that's actually not the truth. Bigger isn't better and more isn't better. When it comes to work-life balance, the more that you shut down and kind of check out and give yourself time and space, you come back and you realize you actually didn't miss anything. All you missed was a lot of noise. And I think as business owners, it's vital that we stay connected to our own voice and our own intuition. And if you're constantly connected to the outside world, you can't hear your own intuition. You're so overwhelmed with the voices of the world that you lose your own inner compass. And for me, it's vital. So I actually shut off a lot. We honestly don't think about our own mortality enough. I think death is one of those taboo kind of topics in our culture and we don't really face it. We don't think about it. We don't talk about it enough. We don't imagine ourselves dying enough. We don't really just dive in. And one of the weird little tricks that I use on myself, especially when I'm just being horrible in my own relationship or I'm being not the person I know I'm capable of being, I'm having a temper tantrum, I'm stressed, I'm just being an ass, whatever it is. I've used this in my relationship with Josh where I will literally fast forward to the point where like I imagine him laying in a coffin and me going, why were you such an asshole? Why didn't you take that time? Why did you let that fight go on for four hours or a day or whatever it is? Or in those moments where I feel myself tightening up or shutting down or withholding love, I try and check myself before I wreck myself. I go, there's gonna come a day where you're gonna flash back on this moment and wished that you just gave him a hug or wish that you went in and said, I love you. It's coming for all of us. So if you can remember that now, you change everything. When I was bartending, I was fully bartending. Like I wasn't talking to myself about, oh my God, I should be dancing right now or I should be working on my coaching practice. I was just really into bartending. Mm. And when I was dancing, I was like, you know, being the best hip hop teacher, dancer I could possibly be. When I was being a coach, same kind of thing. And I think that practice of being fully engaged in the thing that you're doing conserves a ton of energy and that's what most people don't do. A book that really changed my life was Half the Sky by Nicholas Kristof and Cheryl Wudun and it really opened my eyes to the injustice and prejudice that women face all around the world, not only in this country but in the developing world. And women are our most underutilized resource and I feel like it's up to us to take care of each other. It's up to us to look and see what the needs are and to reach out and to fill those holes. It's like we can't wait for anyone else. We are the answer. So for me, it's vital to use everything in my power, whether that's financial resources, whether that's the platform that we've built, whether that's my connections, anything that I have at my disposal. You know, so many of us, we want to do our best. So we have high standards and all of those things are wonderful. But there is a distinction between having high standards and performing at your best and suffering from perfectionism, yeah. which in the extreme can actually be deadly. So there's some research out there. Um, and this is sad, but it's, it's important to know. When they started talking to folks um, who had a relative who recently took their own life, yeah. they discovered that in over 50% of the cases without prompting, the relatives described that person who's no longer here mm. as being a perfectionist. They could never meet their own standards. They never felt like they were so, good enough. Yes. And when that roots in on a deep level, you can understand how mm -hmm. someone could feel that depressed mm -hmm. and feel that lost and feel like nothing they ever do could ever match up. Mm -hmm. So it's a real thing. And for me, you know, I have strains of that and I'm so happy, you know, age and experience, you kind of see the world in a different light. Yeah. But the thing that's helped me the most and what we focus on in the book is this idea of focusing on progress, not perfection. Mm -hmm. When that's your metric for success, did I learn something today? Mm -hmm. Did I make an inch of progress, even if it doesn't look like progress? So there's actually a, a, a great graph in the book. Yes. I'll see if I can describe it yeah, here. Yeah, I so, love this. So P 
people imagine that progress kind of looks like this. You start out here mm. and you're just new at something and then you inch up and 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 it's almost like this straight line to get to your goal. When in reality, right. progress kind of looks like this. You start here yes. as a neophyte and then you maybe inch up and then you take five steps back mm. and then you go way down and then mm. you swirl around and you go up and down and it's just this back. incredibly squiggly line where there are setbacks. Yep. You absolutely feel like maybe you've taken 10 steps back, yes. but that's still progress. So true. So when we're focusing on progress, not perfection, it's a really great way to keep your action in perspective and to keep moving forward because perfectionism really just keeps pe people spinning their wheels. I always had a dream to have an amazing company that didn't necessarily have one home base. I'm fascinated by technology and for me it's about finding the right people who also believe in that same idea that you can do great work, that you don't necessarily have to share the same physical space all the time, but that if you're united behind a vision and behind values and behind um, wanting to do incredible work in this world, that you can create amazing results and only see each other a couple times a year. So for us, it's really about making sure that whoever comes onto the team shares the same beliefs that we do, shares the same vision, cares about making a difference, and also is really self-motivated. You know, just because I'm the CEO of my company, everyone else in the company is very entrepreneurial. They might not want to run a company themselves, but they're self-starters, they're completely motivated, they're always looking for ways to solve problems, they have an attention on the bottom line, and they want to create huge change in this world. If you had to give someone who's recently graduating from our program a piece of advice, what would you say? I would say to learn and to execute on your unique vision. Define success for yourself. Figure out what that means to you. Don't get taken over by the world's definition of success or your family's or what your friends are doing or what anyone says that equals success. Once you can get clear on that vision, then you need to create a plan to make that come to life and to prioritize. I think one of the biggest tragedies of our time is I hear so many people from every walk of life, health coaches all over feeling so overwhelmed and overworked and there's so much that they can do that they feel paralyzed. Well, I don't know what to do first. Or what? How do I make all of this happen? And I think that we all need to take a few steps back and start to get clear on our own vision for success and then actually prioritize making that come to life because then it gives you such clarity and such freedom and all of that static and the overwhelm starts to fall away. When we love what we do and when we're passionate about something, we almost have this sense of guilt about being paid for it. We shouldn't be paid for it. We can't ask for money. Oh, I'll just do it this one time. Oh, I can't charge that much. I'm taking advantage of someone else. And so there's a lot of sometimes subconscious, sometimes just deeply lodged beliefs about our own worth and money and being paid for something that we're really good at that is important that we investigate, that we challenge, and that we choose our own beliefs around money. Because money is this incredible thing. And a lot of women, a lot of people in general, but especially women, there's a lot of conflict. Part of us wants more and part of us feels guilty or greedy for wanting it. And like we're bad or somehow that makes us, I don't know, less spiritual, less soulful, less authentic. And I think that's total BS. I think money is amazing. It is the most incredible tool that you can use not only to take care of yourself and your family, but more importantly, that you can funnel to ideas and causes and real problems in this world that take resources to help fix. And um, that's really exciting to me. And I think that the more that women are financially empowered, the more everyone wins. I mean, the studies have proven this time and time again, that when women get financially empowered, they take better care of their families, better care of their kids. They actually tend to have less kids, especially in the developing world. Communities become stronger, nations become stronger, and really the whole global economy is gonna come stronger. So I get really fired up about women owning what they're worth, getting very comfortable with money, getting very comfortable asking for it, and also becoming stewards of it.
meaning how are they spending it on a day-to-day -day basis? Are they feeling like, you know what? I have enough right now to give to causes I believe in. I have enough right now to invest in my own education, my own business, my own future. I think those are really important issues. And I think as women, we can't shy away from money. We've got to really dive into it and be willing to swim around and investigate all the places that we have screwed up beliefs. And that's okay. All of us have screwed up beliefs about something, but with money, it's like, we gotta get this straight. It's vital.